Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Switching Loss Measurements. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical introduction to switching loss in switch mode power supplies and how switching loss is measured. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of switching or switch mode power supplies. If you're not already familiar with this topic, you might want to watch the presentation, Understanding Switching Mode Power Supplies, before beginning this presentation. As you should already know, switching is widely used in modern power electronics for power conversion, that is, for converting AC to DC, or converting one DC voltage level to another. A semiconductor switch, typically a MOSFET, IBGT, etc., alternates between the on, or conducting state, and the off, or non-conducting state, with the state usually controlled by an externally supplied pulse width modulated signal. This causes a constant input at the switching device to be chopped into pulse DC. The frequency at which this device is switched on and off is usually on the order of kilohertz to low megahertz, and the output voltage of the converter is primarily determined by the switching frequency, or switcher duty cycle. An ideal switch would not itself dissipate any power. No power would be lost in the switch, and there would be no heat generated in the switcher because of this lost or dissipated power. Why would an ideal switch not dissipate or lose any power? In the on or conducting state, when current is non-zero, an ideal switch would have zero impedance, and there would be no voltage drop across the switch. In the off or non-conducting state, the switch has infinite impedance, meaning that current flow through the switch is zero, and a voltage difference or drop exists between the terminals of the switch. Since power is the product of voltage and current, in both cases, no power would be dissipated by an ideal switch in the fully on or fully off states, because in both cases, the product of voltage and current would be zero. Another characteristic of an ideal switch is that it would transition instantaneously between the on and off states. That is, voltage would be non-zero when current is zero, and voltage would be zero when current is non-zero. As mentioned a moment ago, in this ideal case, power dissipated by the switch would always be zero. However, real-world switches do require a finite time to transition between the states. Neither the voltage nor the current change level instantaneously. So their product, power, is also non-zero. This means that power is lost during the transitions. A faster slew rate or more rapid transitions would decrease the amount of power lost. And many newer power electronic technologies, such as wide band gap, are designed to increase switching speed and thus minimize this power loss. Power loss in a switching device is commonly called switching loss and is the sum of four separate loss components. Turn on loss with switching from the off to the on state, conduction loss in the on state, turn off loss when switching from the on to the off state, and non-conduction loss while in the off state. As we mentioned a few moments ago, the vast majority of power is lost during the transitions or while switching between the on and off states. It's important to be able to quantify switching loss, for example, in order to design a suitable cooling system. And it's worth keeping in mind that switching loss may vary based on operating conditions, such as the input voltage, load characteristics, etc. Quantifying or measuring switching loss requires the use of an oscilloscope, a voltage probe, often a differential probe, and a current probe. The voltage probe measures the voltage drop across the switching device, and the current probe measures the current flowing through the switching device. These measured values of voltage are used to calculate the power dissipated in the four different states of operation, turn on, turn off, conduction, and non-conduction, as well as the total or sum of power dissipated in all states. Most often, multiple switching loss measurements are made, and results are presented as statistical values. 
There are several things that should be taken into consideration when making switching loss measurements. First, transitions may occur very quickly, particularly in the case of newer, wide band gap materials. Accurate switching loss measurements therefore require that both the oscilloscope and the probes have sufficient bandwidth in order to be able to accurately measure signals with very fast slew rates, as well as sufficient dynamic range to be able to accurately measure the on and off amplitudes. As with other power measurements, the voltage and current probe should be properly de-skewed in order to ensure that no time offset is present between the measurements of voltage and current. And finally, averaging may also be used to help reduce the amount of noise present in the switching loss measurements. Let's end with a brief summary. Most modern power supplies or converters are based on semiconductor switching devices such as MOSFETs or IBGTs. When in their fully on or fully off states, these devices dissipate very little power, since either current or voltage is near zero in these two states. However, during the transitions between states, both the current and the voltage are non-zero, and hence power will be dissipated or lost within the switching device. This switching loss can be measured using an oscilloscope a voltage probe, and a current probe. Because modern technologies such as wide band gap materials have enabled higher switching speeds, this also places greater requirements on both the oscilloscope and the probes used for making switching loss measurements. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Switching Loss Measurements. If you'd like to learn more about switching loss, other power-related measurements, oscilloscopes or probes, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.